Hello and welcome. In the heat and dust of this election campaign, where the BJP's Prime Ministerial candidate Narendra Modi and Rahul Gandhi are crisscrossing the country, the one face that's almost invisible is that of the Prime Minister, Dr. Manmohan Singh. From the 2009 campaign, where his face was on every election poster, what has led to this perceived fall from grace? To make matters worse for the man himself, and perhaps the Congress party as well, is this, the accidental Prime Minister. Flying off the bookshelf since its release on Friday, it's been called the tell-all book on the tribulations of a man who tried to be an effective Prime Minister. Sanjay Baru, the author and also the former media advisor to Dr. Manmohan Singh in UPA1, is now being targeted by the Congress for a misuse of privilege and being used by the BJP to their own advantage. Sanjay Baru, thank you very much for joining us in the studio. I'm going to ask you the first question that we know you've been asked a hundred times before, the timing of the book. It's... Uh, as we said, being used by the BJP right now in their election campaign, you're seeing the headlines. What is the reason for the timing? Well, first of all, I don't think there's anything in the book really that was not known. So if the BJP is using the book in the campaign, it's just one more bullet in, the, in, in their uh, you know, cannon. But there's really nothing substantial in the book that the BJP uh, and the rest of the country was not aware of. So timing has nothing to do with elections. Uh, I had originally intended that the book should come out after the election, but frankly, my publishers took the view that, look, nobody would be interested in reading a book about Manmohan Singh when he's no longer prime minister. That was their genuine f uh, feedback. And since I'd written a book, I want it to be read. So therefore, I said, all right, if you think the book will be read now, but not read two months from now, that's your judgment call. I'm a writer. They are the marketeers. So it was their decision. And I went with it. So, given the fact that you're saying 10,000 copies have already been sold already out, it's in sold second out. print right now. Yes. Uh, it was the publisher's decision to say that there will be interest at this point in time. The Congress is now targeting you for misusing privilege and uh, doing this only for commercial gain. Is there some merit in that criticism then? None at all. I mean, the Congress is a party that has gone to the people in this election and even in 2009 saying we brought the Right to Information Act. We have made government more transparent. They're, from the rooftops, they are claiming of introducing what Jan Sunwai, right to information. What is this book about? It's about my writing about what, how the Prime Minister's office function, the nature in which, the manner in which decisions were taken, important decisions. And a lot of the book is about issues which were central to the destiny of this country, like the nuclear deal like Manmohan Singh's negotiations with Pakistan. I mean, the, the, the controversy in the last couple of days has not focused on some of the substantial aspects of the book. But I think the people of India have a right to know the manner in which many of these historic or important decisions were taken, the views of different players uh, in this business. So it's part of uh, providing, uh, you know, right to information. And, and the, I don't, I think, as I've said uh, on other channels as well, all over the world, this is an accepted tradition. Retired civil servants or retired people in government, after a certain gap of time, come out and write books. P.C. Alexander, who was secretary to Indira Gandhi, wrote his biography. Bob Gates, the defense secretary to Obama, in fact, wrote a book within a year after he stepped down as the defense secretary to the United States. Right. So this is a normal tradition, and I have not done anything that is not normal. Nonetheless, they're saying that the book is opportunist. The Congress is mm -hmm. saying that. You were talking about important decisions that were made uh, in UPA 1 and some in UPA 2 when you were actually not working with uh, Dr. Manmohan Singh. So the argument that they make is that a lot of it is fiction. You were not privy to those uh, uh, proceedings, those meetings, those files. No, no. All that is explained in the book. I think if the spokesperson had bothered to read my book or whoever drafted the statesman or the spokesperson because having been a former spokesperson, I can tell you that often spokespersons do not say what they personally believe. They say what they are asked to say. And uh, so if those who are asked them to say this have actually read the book, uh, they would not have made these claims. The book does not claim to say anything that I was not personally aware of. The introduction, I have very categorically said that this is really from my memory of what I saw and what I heard. Mm -hmm. Uh, it is not about UPA2. It is true, I left the government in 2008, but I was very much in, uh, aware of what was happening because of my intimate relationship uh, with the Prime Minister, even uh, into 2009. So, let's so I don't think I've said anything here which is fiction. Okay. 
but people want to believe it's fiction it's up to them how so can so fine I? you're talking about your intimate relationship with the prime minister you've worked with him uh, since the mid 90s in in a manner of speaking in one way or another and you were privy to some of the work that went on in UPA 1, undoubtedly. Uh, you also said that the first copy of your book you gave to the Prime Minister. Yes. Did you hear back from him? Was he aware of that, the fact that you were writing this book? Uh, he should have been aware. Even if, I mean, of course I did tell him at some point I was writing the book, but even before I told him, I hope his intelligence agencies are clever enough to have found out that I was writing a book. It's not a big secret. And I hope the IB, uh, you know, briefed him that, you know, I was writing a book. Therefore, I, I, I really hope that uh, as the Prime Minister of the country, uh, he was adequately aware <laughs> of what was happening. Uh, otherwise, it would be a great failure of our intelligence agencies. But in any case, I did mention to him uh, at a very late stage uh, that I was doing this book. I never, never discussed even one word in the book with him. He didn't want to know what you were writing about? He didn't ask, I didn't tell. It was never my intention to share my book with anyone except those who helped me edit the book. So when you gave him a copy of your book, uh, what did he say? Has there been any response? No, no, I have not had any response. I, because in the book, while you have also talked about his persona and uh, his uh, um, sort of being very upright in, in many ways as a prime minister, he's also come across as somebody who's weak and dithering on many issues. He's come across as somebody who's not been willing to take a stand for the office where the prime minister's office has been actually been subverted on many occasions by the Congress party itself. That's a fairly damning uh, sort of report card on a prime minister. Well, you know, the, the fact is that more than 50% of the book records the facts where he took decisions, where he showed resolve. And there were many issues on which he uh, showed resolve, where he provided policy leadership on the economic front, on the foreign policy front, on political front. This was a prime minister who did a lot, and the book records that. Now, naturally, I think the media has tended to focus on the negatives, thanks to the Prime Minister's office, because they focused on the criticism, rather than claiming credit for the you know, positives in the book. Well, then, so there is criticism, and I've said in my introduction that this book says both good things and both critical things. So if you want to focus only on the criticism, that's your problem. But the book itself is very balanced. But you've also made the comment about the Prime Minister that there is something known as active morality and passive morality. And on several occasions, just because he was upright, he was incorruptible, uh, it wasn't enough for him to turn the other cheek when things were happening on his watch, in a manner of speaking. Well, you know, on this business of active and passive morality, it sets him apart from almost every one of his predecessors. Because one, one, probably one could say this about Nehru that he was personally incorruptible, but he did have people in his office who have been accused of corruption, right? Uh, but almost every prime minister in this country has actually been accused of personal corruption, involving members of their individual family or officers in their office. Mm -hmm. Almost every single prime minister has been a target of such accusations. But Dr. Manmohan Singh has never been a target of accusations of corruption within his family or within his office. And that sets him apart. That was his active morality.